And welcome back to Real Side Radio. Dave Sussman here, and we are at the bottom of the third and final hour, and it is always so good to be with you. And uh, we were just talking a little bit about Joe Biden and his fall. And, you know, I, I, I'm going to say this, and this is something that I think is really, you know, for all of us that follow politics very, very closely, um, we're going to be talking about not just Joe Biden and the presidency. We're going to be talking about what is going on in Congress. And again, coming back to what I was saying earlier this hour, Congress is where it's at, folks. Yes, we've got to vote for President Trump. Yes, you've got to vote for your Republican senators. But we got to find a way to take back the House. And to talk about the House, we've got Errol Weber, who is running uh, for Congress seat, uh, California seat 37. That's Karen Bass's district. Errol, how are you? Good, sir. I'm doing very well. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. Thanks for calling in. I know you're very busy with the campaign. Uh, for folks around oh the country God. that don't know California 37, tell us a little bit. It's what, Culver City, Inglewood? Where, whereabouts is it? So California's 37th Congressional District is smack dab in the middle of Los Angeles. It includes neighborhoods like Beverly Wood, Beverly Hills adjacent, Miracle Mile, Culver City, Century City, uh, Palms, Mar Vista, Baldwin Hills, Lamert Park, Crenshaw, and South L.A. It has a population of about 130,000 people where it is 25% white, 25% black, 39% Latino, and 9% Asian. Now let's look at some of these numbers here. 77% high school graduation rate, 35% college graduation rate, and a median income of $46,000. We have an entire district of people who have been voting Democrat by default for the past 30, 40, 50 years and have gotten nothing out of it. And it's time that we do something different in this district so that we can really turn this district and turn the state around. Yeah, you guys are right next to California 43, which is Maxine Waters district. And I know Joe Collins Correct. is running for that seat over there. You and I have met. Uh, I think Joe was at a couple of events you've been at as well. So talk uh -huh. to me a little bit about, you know, the politics of this, because th that is a very, very hard seat for a Republican to win uh, in name only. What are the issues that you're bringing to people's attention for them to take a look at an alternative to some of the issues that they're dealing with right now? I was it's homelessness and crime, right? You bring up a very good point. Uh, so in addition to dealing with homelessness, one of the things I did when I started polling folks back in uh, 2018, I went around the district and asked folks, do you know who your congressperson is, who your state senator is, who the governor of California is? And 95% of respondents couldn't tell me who these elected officials were. But when I then followed up and asked them, do you know, uh, did you vote in the last election? They said half of them said yes. So, okay. like, imagine how dangerous it is to have so many people who do not are not civically engaged, but they do the bare minimum, and then they believe that by voting Democrat by default, they're doing their civic good. But the problem is, all they've done is enable a 75 percent Democrat supermajority in both houses of our state uh, legislature, and that has resulted in many party line votes that have really hurt California when it comes to business, when it comes to quality of life, when it comes to the preservation of our individual rights and the rights to protect our own families. Yeah, and yeah. here in, in the 37th district, they are getting the short end of the stick. There are so many federal policies that have been put in place, such as uh, opportunity zones and even little simple things as removing the individual mandate on the federal level that uh, historically had punished American citizens for not getting health coverage. But you know what California does? They turn around and then they reinstitute the individual mandate on the state level to punish American citizens for not getting health coverage they already can't afford. And then turn around and grant free health coverage to illegal aliens up to 26 years old. How backwards does that sound? This is the, uh, the legislature that voting Democrat by default has been doing to California. And if, uh, and if the people in this district keep voting Democrat by default, they will continue to crush the state. In the past year, 1,800 businesses have left California. And it's not just the business owners leaving. It, think about all the breadwinners who used to work for these companies who are suddenly out of a job. So it's incredibly important that we keep taxes low and incentivize businesses coming to California so that our American families can continue to prosper. Wow. I love the message. I love what you're saying. And I, I'm just going to say this right now, Errol. 
Yeah, you know, you are you're, you're talking like our president spoke last night, and you know the the message is getting out there, and we're seeing that in uh, urban districts that there are a lot of people that are starting to take a look at President Trump because you're seeing black unemployment at the lowest levels recorded. We're seeing Asian unemployment, Hispanic unemployment, and uh, let me ask you, what is Karen Bass's uh-huh. position on all of these things? Because she seems to have been there for quite some time now. She, is she is she so, just a full California blue you know lib? So Karen Bass has been in California's state assembly for twelve years, and then as of what was it, two thousand ten, two thousand eleven, she got into Congress and has been in Congress for the past five terms. Since then, the district has not changed much. If anything, the district has flatlined. Of course, there are a couple uh, programs here and there that have helped a few people here and there, and we need to give credit where credit is due. But it is not enough in this district for you to continue to ne- for a, a federal uh, incumbent to neglect the needs of their district while devoting the bulk of their energy to defeating President Trump and mm-hmm. impeaching President Trump and being obsessed with President Trump while your district suffers. We have many communities that are upset with her right now. I'll give you a quick example. Um, the, we have two Jewish communities in this district, and they are livid with Karen Bass because uh, historically she has voted with the Democrats on anti-Semitic bills. There has been an anti-BDS resolution that, uh, that went through Congress, and she voted against it. And then there was uh, a resolution denouncing the, uh, the anti-Semitic remarks made by Congressman Ilan Omar, and she voted present, and her excuse was that it's a protest vote. No, it's just you didn't have the spine to stand up for all the Jews in your district. That's really what it is. So we have a lot of people who are disgruntled with Karen Bass and are looking for change. And it's important that we run the most incredible voter education campaign so that voters, all 500,000 eligible voters in this district, can go out and vote knowing what they're voting for and who they're voting for. And with that knowledge, they will see how Democrats have been hurting them over the past few decades and will finally decide to vote Republican. We've got Errol Weber on the line with us. Errol is running for uh, Congressman Congress seat California 37. That's Karen Bass's district in the center of Los Angeles. And you can find him at Weber 2020. That's Weber with two B's dot com. And you can find him at Errol Weber on Twitter. Errol, I just followed you on Twitter as well. I'm very excited to see how things go here. Uh, how are things looking for you in the primary in March? So for the primary, we have a lot of excited Republican support, and the bulk of my education campaign actually starts after the primary election. Right now, I'm just trying to push the the independent uh, candidate out so that we can duke it out, me and Karen Bass, uh, for March through November. Okay, great. (laughs) Good, good, good. In our last minute here, tell folks how they can help you out and uh, try to see you make that final two for the general election. So... I need people to help me canvas the district and share the good word about what the Republican Party has been doing and how conservative principles can help their life. It is also incredibly important campaigns need money to run. So I am looking for all of our American patriots all over the country to donate to my campaign at Weber2020.com so we can keep this message going so that we can finally flip these districts in the middle of L.A. This is all about the House, ladies and gentlemen. If you've been enjoying impeachment and Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, and Gerald Nadler controlling things, then leave it the way it is. If not, you got to vote for folks like Errol Weber if you're in California 37. Best of luck, good sir. I'm sure I will be seeing you. Uh, we seem to always end up at the same events these days, and I wish you best uh-huh. with the primary. So uh, thanks for giving us a call Excellent. in. Thanks so much, Errol. Take care. And, uh, Thank fo- you so much. You're very, very welcome. And folks, again, I'm just going to say this because this is something that we are, you know, repeating a lot here at Real Side Radio, and that is that it is all about the House. No matter where you live, no matter what part of the country that you are, if you don't think that if you're living in a blue state and you don't think your vote counts, it counts. Every district counts. There's 435 districts, 435 representatives. Your vote counts because everything that we've been seeing for the past three years, especially the past six months with impeachment against this president, is because of the House. 
We'll be back with my closing thoughts here after the break. Dave Sussman here at Real Side.